welcome students to this series on introduction to constitution this video aims to cover the provisions for early childhood communities from their scheduled class scheduled tribes and legal sections along with the right to education this forms a significant part of social welfare and justice in the indian governance and hence its importance cannot be underestimated this has been actualized in variety of ways that we are going to see now so the first provision for early childhood and right to education is encapsulated in article 39 and in article 45 so let us begin with the provision for early childhood the directive principles of state policy aims to establish the idea of welfare state through its provisions for governance children as the future of the nation need to be included in the fold of welfare hence the directive principles of state policy make provisions for welfare of children since early childhood one of the most important provision is mentioned in article 39f which states that the state shall make provisions to ensure that the children and youth are not exploited article 45 further ensures that the children below the age of 6 are given early childhood care and education this directive was changed by the 86 constitutional amendment of 2002 Originally it made a provision for free and compulsory education for all children until they complete the age of 14 years which was enacted as the right to education we know it as the fundamental right to education uh, popularly rte early childhood care encompasses neonatal care provisions for adequate food nutrition ensuring that no child is kept away from education due to economic or social or any kind of disability It also pertains to the protection of children and affording them rights and protection of the state in cases or in case of any sort of uh, exploitation or violation of their human rights. The government of India has passed some legislations pertaining to early childhood care such as the right to education which is the fundamental right mid day meal schemes which ensures that nutritional meals are available to children in public schools programs like service shikshan abhiyan which also pushed the welfare of the children by their inclusion in the education system by universalizing education so a child should not be robbed of his childhood and that is a provision that directive principle uh, principle of state policy aims to cover it allows for protection of children it allows for securing the right uh, needs of children and uh, ensures that the governance of this nation works towards the betterment of children considering they are going to be provided with education nutrition or any other care and protection from law government that they can get so children as the future of our nation need to be healthy need to be strong need to be uh, need to have education so that they can become part of the indian society they can become uh, citizens of this nation uh, in a very positive contributory and participatory way for that to happen the govern government as well as the society needs to take care of uh, their childhood needs and care and that is the provision that is given in article 39 and article 45 it has been actualized in legislations such as right to education mid day meal schemes sarva shikshan abhiyan which universalizes education and gives it uh, makes it a right of the children to access and avail education when possible now we are going to see the provisions for weaker sections the directive principles of state policy also provides for the welfare of marginal sections of the society it aims to bring the communities which have been long kept away from the process of development these uh, these communities or these sections include women scheduled caste and scheduled tribes or other weaker classes which have been existing on the fringe of society and need to be included in progress of this nation hence the directive principles of state policy indicate to the state that the state shall promote the educational and a uh, economic interest of the weaker sections education in this context is seen as a force of social change education makes it possible for vulnerable communities to be aware of their rights to assert their rights 
and participate in socio-economic spheres positively. It is the duty of the government to promote equity in economic spheres for the marginal sections of the society through legislations or schemes. Hence, it is very important that no one is kept away from education. Therefore, we have an educational policy based on equity. This has been evident in the positive discrimination policy or the reservation policy for weaker sections in education and employment, such as the 73rd and the 74th constitutional amendment providing for reservation in local elections or employment. This has been particularly spelt out in Article 46 that lays down that the state shall promote the educational and economic interests of weaker sections, particularly those uh, scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and other weaker sections that have been long kept away from the process of development. A nation cannot be considered uh, as developed or in process of development if it leaves a very substantial number of uh, population away from the process of development and development entails that one uh, focuses on education one focuses on reducing economic inequity or inequality so in that case education is a very uh, crucial focus of a welfare state education becomes the cornerstone through which a state can manage to lift millions and millions out of poverty, millions and millions bringing them into the fold of positive development and uh, positive growth uh, of this nation. So education, if one has access to education, one has access to better employment, employment that pays better. Once you get better employment, you get you know, to set your standard of living, you get to be healthy, you get to eat nutritious food because you have that kind of income to sustain yourself. Hence, education becomes the focus of an welfare state and that is what is provided for in the directive principles of state policy. That as a welfare state, you should be providing for education and employment benefits for a weaker sections, for children and that is how it uh, we can transform this nation into a developed nation, a nation that care, takes care of its citizens and in that regard the government of this country, the governance of this country has working towards uh, making sure that education is accessible to people and no person is left behind based on their social or economic uh, disabilities. Uh, one has to take into account that there are discriminatory practices uh, in Indian society that can keep people away from uh, accessing education or participating positively in society and these discriminations can hinder the development of this nation. So directive principles of state policy took that, acknowledged that there could be uh, discriminatory practices and hence work towards uh, getting, the, uh, including or providing for inclusion of weaker sections and children into the development fold. Article 46, Article uh, 39 and Article 45 provide for those things. So thank you students. This has been a short summary of provisions for directive principles on state policy for early childhood right to education and provisions for SC and STV and weaker sections. It indicates the state uh, it indicates to the state the role that it has to play in establishing a welfare state by getting the marginalized and the voiceless into the fold and make them equitable part of the development process. So thank you students for your time.